I'm Sohan. Thanks for joining me on Gong Fu Tea Cha. We're coming to you from the beautiful Guan Yin Tea House in Austin, Texas. Today, we are going to make green tea. Green tea is the most essential kind of tea. It's one of my favorite kinds of tea. And what I say when I mean the most essential kind of tea is that if you were to pick a fresh tea leaf off a living tea plant and rub it together in your hands and smell it, then that fragrance is what we are trying to preserve and capture when we make green tea. And despite being so essential, it is actually one of the most difficult kinds of tea to make. It requires a lot of delicacy and a light touch to make. And so we're gonna get a little in-depth today and show y'all how to make green tea. What is green tea? And I'm just gonna go ahead and get my vessels ready, wake up my vessels like we discussed during the waking up episode by warming them with hot water. So how is green tea made? Green tea is produced by taking the freshly picked leaves of the tea plant, Camellia sinensis, and cooking them in a wok for Chinese tea. We generally cook it in a wok at fairly high temperature in order to denature an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase. And that enzyme is what catalyzes the oxidation of the tea leaf. So green tea is a fully unoxidized tea. That is the defining characteristic of green tea. What is oxidation? Oxidation is when you bite into an apple and the white flesh turns brown, it's oxidizing. Or for example, you cut an avocado and the green flesh turns black, or a rusting nail. That's all the process of oxidation. And it happens to tea leaves too. You pick a tea leaf and as soon as it's picked, it begins oxidizing and the green leaf will turn a deep reddish brown color. And that's how we make black tea or what the Chinese call hong cha or red tea is by allowing the tea to oxidize. And then when it's partially oxidized is how we make oolong tea. But to make green tea, we want to stop that oxidation process as soon as possible. That technique is called sha ching, kill the green. And it refers to the denaturing of that enzyme polyphenol oxidase. And that's how we seal that flavor, that fresh picked tea flavor and keep it there. And it preserves it for about a year. We can keep green tea for about a year. Today, we're gonna to be drinking and serving Meng Ding Gang Lu. This is a uh, somewhat vernacular Western green tea. It is famous. It's one of the famous green teas of Sichuan province where I used to live. Uh, it's very popular in the city of Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province. And what do I say vernacular? I mean, you can see it's a bunch of little leaves and they don't have a very orthodox shape. They have been stir fried in the wok for the Sha Ching and then charcoal dried, dried with uh, air heated by charcoal. And you get a pretty informal shape, unlike the green teas of the East that tend to be a little bit more refined and have a more orthodox shape. So I've got my, my gaiwan hot. I'm going to go ahead and get my leaves in here. How much do we use? Mm, less, less than we would use for say an oolong or some white teas. This is about how much I've got in there. I, I say enough leaves to cover the bottom in a eh, medium thick layer. And it's gonna be all up to taste and you are gonna be able to adjust for the character of this tea uh, and by the amount of this tea with your temperature and your time. So one thing I like to do before I make any tea is to let the leaves warm up and let those fragrant essential oils that make the tea smell nice get nice and soft and evaporate and then I get to smell it and you get a different smell off that and that kind of informs me on how to make the green tea. When we are making green tea, the name of the game is to bring out uh, a delicate, sweet, subtle flavor. That is our goal. We do not want to scald the tea. And so the functional aspect of green tea making and probably the core technique of this lesson is going to be learning how to get the water to just the right temperature. Many teas use very hot water, boiling hot water. Green tea is not one of them. Green tea is many different kinds of tea from many different places uh, all across China, as well as Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Kenya, uh, et cetera. Anywhere that they grow tea, they make some kind of green tea usually. And in general, green tea can be very diverse, but most green teas are gonna be steeped at a lower than boiling temperature. So our vessels are awake. Now we're gonna give our tea a quick little rinse as we've discussed to wake it up. I'm just gonna wave the water back and forth here a little bit to bring it down to just the right temperature. 
This cool, the temperature of the water is not as crucial for the rinse. You can hit it with slightly warm wa warmer water for the rinse. And I'm gonna go ahead and just really quick, give it a once over and decant it. And we're gonna examine the color of the wicker, even though this is just the, the rinse, we're not gonna drink this. Just getting the color of the wicker and it might be a little hard to see on camera, but we have these beautiful little downy hairs floating in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour this off, give it to Oxball here. There you go, buddy. So now I'm ready to go. Everything is rinsed and hot. Everything is awake. I'm going to go ahead and pour my water first into this vessel, the Gongdao Bay, this is typically used for collecting the tea after steeping, but it serves a secondary purpose, which is to give us a place to cool the water while we're waiting for it to reach the right temperature to let the water rest. And how do we know when the water is the right temperature? This is probably the most important part of this particular segment. We at, here we don't like to use thermometers. I don't use thermometers. I don't use stopwatches. I don't use scales. I like to kind of cultivate my ability to intuitively gauge how to make the tea. And the best way to do that is by listening to the tea itself. Tea doesn't talk. So when I say listen to the tea, what I really mean is smelling the tea. I'm going to go ahead and raise my gaiwan bowl to my nose. Smell it really nice floral notes on top of some grassy seaweedy character of this uh, Western green tea. And then with my other hand, I'm going to feel the temperature of the water. And this is one way to do this is by holding it just above the Gongdao Bay and feeling the steam as it rises off. And now I've been doing this for years, this particular technique of feeling the water and smelling the leaves at the same time. And I've been teaching this for years. And what I used to say was when you're doing this, you are constructing a database of smells and temperatures in your mind. And I would say to people, the first time you do this, this might tell you nothing. And what you're actually doing is just getting used to certain smells and certain temperatures and how they match up. And that way, when I try a tea I've never had before, and I smell it, I say, my brain is like, I recognize some of these smells and these smells go with these particular temperatures. And that's not untrue, but I think that there's more to it than that. What's really going on is that the water and the tea are communicating with each other through your senses. I'm taking two not very well-developed senses in human beings, which are temperature, perception, and the sense of smell. We don't use either of those senses very, very much in our everyday lives, most people. But they're important. Both of those are very important in making tea. So I'm gonna hold my hand over the water, smell the leaves, and what I really think is going on is that those two agents, the water and the tea, are meeting in my perception, they're meeting in my brain, and when the water feels right, when the temperature of the water matches the smell of the tea, then I know it's ready to use. And you might mess it up a couple times at first. You might let the water get too cool, or you might let the water be too hot, and then we'll have some bitterness, or it'll be too faint, but after several iterations of doing this and getting a feel for it and making it too strong or too weak a couple of times, then you'll gradually calibrate yourself to the point where you can at least master one or two basic green teas and match the temperature to the smell. So I'm gonna give this a little wave. This tea, if I were to put a number on the temperature that I like this tea at, I would probably put it about 200 degrees. However, like I said, I don't usually use a thermometer. So I'm just going to feel it and I'm gonna say that it's ready right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour. I just wanna get one more shot of these beautiful leaves before I pour them. This is after one rinse here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour my water, delicately pour my water and we'll get a little bit more into the, the pouring technique in a second. The name of the technique is to use a light touch. That's the core of what we're doing here. 
and letting it steep for almost no time, just a few seconds, and decanting it. And a fun little trick for when we want to get every last drop out, we could sit here shaking the guy on forever like this, but we can also switch hands, switch the aperture, and pour out the backside of the guy on it. Bloop. There it is. That's all there is. That's all the tea that's in this guy one. And I like to leave my lid off between steepings for green tea specifically because it lets the tea rest and cool off a little bit. And that way, when we hit it the next time, we're sure not to scald it because it's already got some cooler water in it. You can see we have this lovely green gold color of the liquor. That's what we want. We do not want our liquor to be too yellow or too orange. That will be bitter. So we want our green tea to be green in color. And now we are ready to serve and drink the tea, which obviously is the most important part of the whole process. All right, that's our first steeping. If you're sipping along at home, what you should have tasted is a light, delicate, flavored liquor with a kind of distant floral fragrance. Green tea is not supposed to be bitter. A lot of people think of green tea as tasting bitter. That is because they have had scalded green tea that has been steeped too hot or just low quality green tea that wasn't good to begin with. I have had a, a woman tell me once that she liked the way I make tea because it doesn't have that tea taste. What she meant by that tea taste was the ta astringent bitter taste of scalded green tea. And so we're trying to exclude that quote unquote tea taste when we're making our tea by cooling the water, letting it get to exactly the right temperature before we use it. Again, using our technique of smelling and feeling. Fresher green teas can be steeped at hotter temperature. Uh, a really fresh Longjing, for example, I'll use almost boiling water on. And as the tea ages, slowly oxidizing and going stale, as we would call it for, for a green tea aging. It gets more bitter and more astringent and we have to use cooler water in order to exclude those flavors. And so there's kind of a paradox with, with tea where we assume that if you want more flavor, you can always use hotter water and it'll squeeze more flavor out of the tea. For green tea, you will just make it more bitter you will not get more fragrance because in the Chinese would say that too hot water will blow away the fragrance. And we don't want to do that. We want a nice, delicate tea. So we want to get the water to exactly where we want it to be, just in that sweet spot where we have the flavor, that grassy, seaweedy, floral flavor, and that fragrance is allowed to develop and come out without being pushed away by too hot water. Green tea is simple and essential. Uh, a green tea master is not trying to uh, put their influence into the tea. They are trying to get out of the way of the tea and allow the natural flavor of the tea to come out. Compare this with oolong, which is very complex, requires in a very elaborate process. An oolong tea master, the skill of rolling and twisting and withering and charcoal roasting the leaves has a huge effect on the flavor. And so when you taste that oolong tea, you're tasting the skill of the master. A very skilled green tea master, you do not taste the process at all. All you're tasting is the tea. And so when we drink green tea, we're trying to taste the flavor of the place where it's from. The French would call this the terroir. When talking about wine, we call it the diway, the flavor of the place, the flavor of the earth. And that's gonna be the minerals, uh, in the soil, in the water, the air, the sunlight, the plants and animals that live around that tea, everything that comes into contact with the living plant contributes to that D-way. And green tea in particular is very diverse, genetically diverse. Oolongs are all related to each other. They share a common ancestor. Puars are also all related to each other. They're all the Daya Zhong and Xiao Zhong Ye Zhong. They're all these Yunnan uh, Puar varietal of plants. Green tea can be made from pretty much any variety of tea plant all over the world. Wherever tea is being grown, you will find someone making green tea. It is the most basic and essential type of tea. So the water is now ready. I have judged that it is ready and I'm going to pour it. I'm gonna get a little more into the pouring technique. First off, 
See how my leaves are a little bit clumped up on the side and they've actually fallen before they were even more clumped up on the side. I'm just gonna give them a little shake and try and get those leaves to kind of reset into the center of the gaiwan. I want them to be pretty evenly dispersed because I don't want that mass of leaves to be such that the leaves on the top are opening completely and releasing all their juice at once. Well, meanwhile, the leaves on the bottom are getting squished and don't have any room to expand. So I want to spread them out and let them be a little even. And then notice my pouring technique here. I'm not doing a hard pour. I'm doing a delicate pour. I'm going around the side, but I'm not pouring hard enough to move the leaves. I'm just letting the water rise up gently from underneath the leaves. That is another way that we help to prevent the tea from becoming bitter and astringent. The more you move the leaves around, the faster the tea will steep. The faster the tea steeps, the more astringent chemicals can come out of it. So short, short steep, and there we go. And again, we want a really nice, bright, luminous green liquor. Some green teas will tell you to steep them at 180 degrees. I think that might make sense for Japanese green teas, which are steamed and um, tend to be a lot brighter green. You get that really, really bright, like almost highlighter green with green teas. Chinese green teas are steeped somewhat hotter and you get a nice pale green gold liquor rather than that super bright uh, kelpie green like you get with the senchas. So this is our second steeping and we are ready to drink it. It has been steeped exactly the right time, exactly the right temperature, and now we get to enjoy it. So that steeping should have been a little bit more robust, a little bit more of that grassy taste coming out. When we steep tea in this way, when we practice Gong Fu Chao, we steep the tea many times. That is at the center of the way that we make tea when we're doing Gong Fu Cha. And so each steeping is gonna taste different from every other one. And that's the progression, the natural progression of the steepings. Even if I hit every single steeping at the perfect time and the perfect temperature and get the exactly ideal amount of solute into every steeping, they will still taste different. And the progression of flavor as we go through those steepings is like movements in a symphony where you have a common theme, but each one is distinctive and unique. And so each steeping is gonna also require a slightly unique technique. And that's for you to decide and you to feel out. I can't tell you how each one of these is gonna be steep because from one day to the next, and depending on someone's taste, it will change. I will say, however, that green tea, the first part before the intermission, before the peak of the green tea, the first part of this process is all about cooling the water and making sure that that bitter and astringent taste is not present. After we've peaked about the third or fourth steeping, then we can be a little bit more forceful with it. We can use warmer water, still not boiling hot, but a little bit warmer. And we can also move the leaves a little bit. So I'm gonna demonstrate that technique this time I'm gonna use my trusty old gooseneck kettle and I'm actually going to pour it directly. This water's had a chance to cool and also, like I mentioned, I'm using hotter water than I was at the beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in here and there. See that spin? See the way the leaves spin around like that? That is allowing the leaves that were clumped up on the bottom to get up to the top and move around and allow them to stretch out and get inflated full of water and to expand and release their precious tea juices. So still a fast steep. At no point do I want to steep my green tea for very long. I'll increase the temperature, I'll increase the, the kinetic activity by doing a, a more dynamic pour like that, but I don't really like to steep green tea for a long time ever like I would for uh, hei cha or maybe a white tea. I'll allow those ones to steep longer because 
that astringency and bitterness comes out mostly as a factor of time. It's also noteworthy that in China, most people, most of the time, do not drink green tea in this way. This technique has not been applied to green tea historically. Historically, people would drink directly out of the gaiwan, or they drink their green tea out of a glass, just a tall tumbler type glass that they put the leaves in, they put the water in, they let them sit together, and they drink it out of that. And there's also a kind of mezzanine in-between technique involving a second Gongda Bay, which we'll cover in another little supplementary lesson, the two Gongda Bay steeping technique. But the name of the game for green tea is cool your water, smell your tea, listen to your tea, pay attention to it. By cooling our water, we exclude the bitter and astringent flavors and we allow the natural character of the green tea to come out. What is that natural character? It is sweet, it is grassy, it is floral. Many different green teas, they all taste a little bit different, but these rules will help you to feel out how to make a green tea, even if it's something you've never made before, these techniques will help you to pay attention to the tea and make it as well as you possibly can. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I'm Sohan. This has been Gong Fu Tea Cha. If you want to stay tuned for what we got coming next, please subscribe to us on YouTube and we've got lots more great Chinese tea education coming at you.